Well, I can say the same thing about you, Matt, respectfully. I'm sorry you don't see it that way. But the fact is, you don't have a standard by which you can judge whether these logical absolutes are or are not conceptual. I'm asking you for a list. Tell me what they are not. I will write them down here you're, on my computer as we're talking. You're Tell asking me. Not. You're asking me to prove that a God doesn't exist, essentially. No, I'm not. And I don't. Yes, you are, essentially. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. Let me no, finish. No, I'm not. I'm asking you to tell me. I'm going to hang up on you in a second, Matt, if you don't let me finish this. I'm making an analogy here. I'm sorry that your brain missed it. You are essentially asking me to prove that a God doesn't exist and claiming that a God does exist in your mind until I actually demonstrate that he doesn't. That's why you're doing the same thing nope. with, these, with these logical absolutes because you're saying, nope. and you just said a second ago, that if I can't tell you what they aren't, I can't tell you what they are. No, I do not believe in putting an atheist on the spot and saying prove God does not exist. It's proving then the stop doing it. I don't do that, and that's not what I'm doing. I tell Christians to stop doing it. You, 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 you just did it with regard, not God, with regard no. to the logical absolutes. No, no, you said, because these things are not conceptual by nature. Okay, great. Then what are they? And you couldn't get, tell me what they really are. They are non-conceptual. There are, so two, you, there are okay. two possibilities. They are conceptual or non-conceptual, and I'm saying they're non-conceptual. Okay, great. Now we're making progress. I said if that an hour ago. If they're non-conceptual, then... I'm going to assume that what you're meaning is they're physical. No. Non-conceptual does not mean physical. It means non-conceptual. It means that it's not conceptual. Whether or not it's physical or not is not the issue. You're making a, a fallacy. <laughs> you're making a fallacy of exclusion. You're saying there's either physical or conceptual, and that's all there is. You That'd don't, be a false dichotomy, not exclusion. You, you uh, are excluding so other options. It, uh, false dichotomy uh, is a fallacy of exclusion. I want you to tell me what they actually are. I or told you, they're, they're non-conceptual. What does that mean? It means they're not concepts. Okay, so logical absolutes are not concepts. That's correct. Okay, they're not concepts. Are they not anything else? I have no idea. Okay. What, what, what does, anything, what does anything else mean? So that you know for a fact that these things are not concepts. Um. Do you know for so a fact they're absolutes? The statements are non-concepts. So A is equal to A. That's All a non-concept. Um, a is equal to A. Is a non-concept. Well, it is not concept. a concept, but we can oh, we can conceive Ooh. of that. The statement is not the essence. But it's not a concept, but we can conceive of it. The you know any place where A equals A exists outside of the mind? It doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. That's then correct. How come we're talking about it. No, no. Now you've now you've really changed scopes because existence. I'm sorry if we're using a different word here. Um, goes back to what what is in reality. These things. Is my thought of reality. These things transcend reality. Reality is subject to them. Do, do your thoughts exist? My thoughts exist. Yes. Okay. Then we have concepts that really exist. Yes, we do. So. The statement. But I said that a they're not concepts. A is a conceptual statement. It yes. exists. Yes, the con the conceptual okay. statement A equals A exists. So that it exists in your mind. The conceptual statement A equals A exists. The okay. actual so the actual a... the actual thing that that statement points to is not a concept. Ah, it is a truth statement, which this... is conceptual by nature, which probably reflects reality. You cannot give me the necessary preconditions for intelligibility. The only thing you can do is presuppose the validity of logic without it giving the necessary conditions for its existence. The very argument of TAG is this. They are conceptual by nature because they are of the mind. They only occur in mind. You don't find them under rocks. You can't freeze them. You can't take a picture of them. They, they are, are of mutable. The mind. If you say that they are not of the mind, then you have to tell me, what are they? Uh, whatever your argument is, is... I don't care, Matt. Whatever you say, that's what it's not going to be. That's not helping the argument at all. I would want an atheist. I'm not trying to help your argument. I'm trying to show you where you went wrong. <laughs> but with all respect, Matt, you're not. I mean, we both will not agree on this. I, okay, I identified a fallacy in there, and it's a fallacy of structure. I've it's, corrected it, many of the times you've cited a fallacy of being wrong, saying, no, that's not it, it's actually this one. No, you have, you have said it's not a fallacy, but you haven't actually uh, corrected it. You've just said that it's not a fallacy. When we're what, we're, what, we're talking, what we're talking about here is, and, and you keep changing scope, Woo. There, is, there is in my mind 
a concept. A concept statement, A equals A. That concept statement is a concept in my mind. It points to something, just as a concept of an apple points to something. In the apple case, it points to something physical. In the concept A equals A, it points to something abstract. Yep. Did you invent the concept? No. It's not declared upon you. Uh, it's, no, it's not. The, the, the concept, the concept itself, that concept statement, it is uh, not dependent upon me, but it is right. it, the concept statement itself is contingent upon my existence and my ability to conceive it. Because if I'm, ah. not, here, because if I'm not here, then my concept disappears. Ah, so different minds can take these things up and bring them in or out of existence according yes. to their creative ability? No, they don't bring them in and out of existence. They bring the concepts in and out of existence. Whatever, concept okay. you, whatever concepts you have in your mind, you have <coughs> brought them into existence in your mind. All not right. in reality, not, not as a physical thing, in okay. your mind. Let me run with that. Let me run with that a little bit. You're an atheist who denies the existence of God, period, right? Um, wow, where'd you get that from? Uh, I'm going somewhere, but, but am I right? Um, let me, oh, okay, let me ask you this. I'll just say, I'll say you are, because at least for every um, practical definition of God that I've ever heard that's not, you know, God is love or happiness or, or something where, where God is being a label stuck onto something else or God is the logical absolutes, yes, I don't believe in any of those other gods. I don't believe okay. in those supernatural, transcendent thinking minds. Okay, so you are a materialistic naturalist then? Essentially. Okay. That would mean, then, that to bring this down really quickly, your mind, your brain, is the product of physical properties in the universe and biochemical reactions. I, I, yeah. Okay. And they are limited to and governed by the physical properties of uh, physical properties. Sure. Okay? Yeah. That means that there is no such thing as logic. No. Logic is, let me finish, logic is the process of proper inference if biochemical reactions are all that you are thinking, then all that you can say is that what you perceive to be logically true and absolute and necessary is nothing more than the result of chemical reactions in your brain. Agreed. Here's, not, here's the problem. That would not Here, be logic. Here's the your problem. Your system is self-refuting. Here's, here's the problem. You just said what you perceive, that, that perception is what exists. That concept in the mind. Yes. And only in the mind. You're talking about empiricism and epistemology here. Yes, that concept but exists in my mind. In, in naturalism, logic doesn't have a place of its own transcendent existence in any way. There's nothing more than the That's correct, of because reactions. it's an abstract. Then there it, is no it such is thing the as logic of in what It is the essence of what it is. How, no, how, here's, what, here's what confuses me the most. How can guys like you not get this and refute it constantly and then turn around and make these exact same points about a god where you're taking the same characteristics and then extending it to also be a thinking, caring, loving mind? Well, I'm going to answer that by asking you, how can a person as intelligent as you and as articulate as you not get it that the transcendent nature of rationality itself is dependent upon conceptual realities and the absolute mind that authors them? Otherwise, you have no rationality to begin with. Because they're not. I can, can't, well, because your answer, what you say, is not true. We both agree that logic exists independent of what you and I are. And even though no, we just no, we don't. No, we don't. And that's the problem. We don't we both don't agree, agree that. Logic we, no, no, no. Just let me finish. We don't both agree that logic exists independent of us. We both agree that the absolutes upon which logic are based uh, uh, exist independent of us. Logic is Let's purely conceptual and contingent upon a mind to use. Go, oh, let's go with that then. So then the conceptual absolute, I mean, excuse me, these logical absolutes, do they depend upon our existence no. or their existence? They no, don't, they don't depend on anything. They're not existing? They, in, in what sense? In the sense that they're a part of reality? No, reality depends upon them. They are true.